Hello, Grade 12s. Today we will look at future value investments and how you can use certain formulae to calculate investment values. Let us look at a real life situation where present value annuities will be used. Tebuho wants to study after school. Let's join him now as he talks to his teacher about his payment options. <laughs> Come in. Hi, ma'am. Thanks for seeing me. Hi, Tabucho. Come have a seat. Yes. What can I do for you? Well, I wanted to talk to you about my study plans for next year and the different payment options that I might have. I'm glad to hear you've decided to study further. What are you planning to study? Well, I was hoping to enroll for a BCom, but I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. Well, the fees for your first year are usually about 13,000 Rand. Wow, that's a lot of money. I don't think I'd be able to afford it, even if I asked my parents to help me out a bit. If you work hard, you could lessen that cost. What do you mean? Well, universities often give discounts on fees for good results. Let's see. It says here in this book that you can get 1,000 Rand off for every distinction that you get. You're a good student. You should be able to get a few distinctions. Hmm. Well, I think if I work very hard, I'd manage to get about three distinctions. But that still leaves me with 10,000 Rand that I have to find. There are other options. You could apply for a bursary. You've worked hard up to now and got good results at the end of grade 11. So the chances are good that you could get a full bursary. Well, that would be great. And I will apply for a few bursaries. But I think I might need a backup plan just in case I don't get one. That's wise. Thanks. But I was thinking I'd have enough money to pay for my tuitions. I have a weekend job as a DJ where I get about 350 per weekend. So if I'm really careful, I might be able to save about 700 a month. And of course, when it gets closer to exams, I'll have to work less hours so that I can study. That's good. And if you put your money in a savings account, you could earn interest on your savings. I hear that banks are offering 9.5% interest per annum, calculated monthly. Oh, really? Well, thanks for your help, ma'am. You've given me a lot to think about. Cheers. Good luck, Taboho. It seems that Taboho is facing some difficult choices right now and needs some help with making some important financial decisions for his future. I think we can assist him with some tools for his planning, in particular, looking at ways to save for the future. When someone invests a fixed amount at monthly intervals, we call this investment an annuity. To do this, we are going to use the geometric sum formula to calculate the total value of an annuity after a certain period of time. That must be Taboho. Come and have a seat. Okay, thank you. So, how are you doing, Taboho? Ah, fine. Thanks for having me. No, it's only a pleasure. I've come to see if you can help me. I've been thinking about my studies next year and I'm seriously worried about money and my future. I think you'll find that mathematics can help you. Once we've had a careful look at everything, you'll have a better understanding of the world of banking and that will help you make better financial decisions. That's exactly what I need right now. Right, Saboko, let's have a look at your investment problem and the possible solution offered by the bank. Well, I'll have to work out how much money I'll have to save by the beginning of February next year. Well, I'll need to work out how much money I will have saved by the start of February next year if I manage to invest 700 Rand each month starting from now. The school advisor told me that the bank is offering 9.5% per annum compound interest calculated monthly. But I don't know exactly what that means. Well, to start with, do you remember what compound interest is? Yes, well, that's where you earn interest on the total balance each month. Don't you use the formula A equals P bracket 1 plus i to the n? That's right, good. And if you remember, a is the amount or final value. p is the principal value, which means it is the amount you invest to start with. i stands for interest, and n, the number of calculations of interest. Now, in the information you are given, the interest was quoted as 9,5% per annum. This means the interest you get is 9,5% each year, but it is calculated monthly, so there will be 12 calculations of interest in a year. To 
see how this works, let's consider what would happen to your 700 Rand if you invested it at the beginning of May for one month. I think I see what to do. Use the compound interest formula, right? Yes, that's right. Why don't you give it a try? Okay. To find the value of the investment after one month, we need to substitute in the values that we know into the formula. We are trying to find the final value, or A. I'm investing 700 Rand. So, P is 700 Rand. The interest rate is 9,5% per annum. So is I 0 0,095 here? Well, you write about the way you have represented the 9,5%. But that is the total interest for the year. After one month, you can't expect to get the whole year's interest. We need to divide the annual interest by the number of times that interest is compounded. Well, in this case, the interest is calculated monthly. So, we divide the 0 0,095 by 12. The number of months in for which the money is invested is 1. When I substitute these values into the formulas, I get 700 times 1 plus 0 0,095 divided by 12 raised to the 1, which gives me an answer of 705 rand and 54 cents. That's great. Well done. So, we started the month with 700 Rand in our investment account. At the end of May, the 700 Rand will have earned interest. And will have increased in value. So, when we start the investment period for June, the total amount being invested is the original 700 Rand plus the interest calculated so far. At the end of June, interest will be calculated on this larger amount and added to the balance. So I'll earn more interest in June than I earned in May, even though I didn't make any more deposits. That's right. Each month, the interest is calculated on the initial deposit, plus the interest earned from the previous months. At the end of May, the 700 Rand grew by 1 12th of 9,5% to give a new balance of 705 Rand and 54 cents. But at the end of June, the investment earned 5 Rand 59 cents in interest to give a total of 711 Rand and 13 cents. When we look at the investment for July, The interest earned is a twelfth of 9,5% of the balance at the end of June and is more than the interest earned in May and June. The new total is now 716 Rand and 76 cents. Wow, that's amazing. So the longer I leave the 700 Rand invested, the more it grows. You've got it. And if we continue in the same way, in other words, you don't add or subtract from your 700 Rand investment, by the end of January, it would have earned nine interest deposits. If we put this information into a table, it would look like this. Here we have calculated the interest for each month and the balance at the end of each month in a table. If you look at the column which shows the interest earned each month, you'll see that it has grown from 5 Rand 54 cents in the first month to 5 Rand 91 cents in January. You can also see from the table that the initial deposit of 700 Rand in May will be worth 751 Rand and 49 cents at the beginning of February. So, if I invest my money in May, it would increase by 51 Rand and 49 cents in only 9 months. That's great, but it's not nearly enough to pay my university fees for next year. You're absolutely right, but you've forgotten that you've committed to saving another 700 Rand at the beginning of June. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That should mean I could earn even more interest, right? That's right. 
Now, why don't you try and work out how many lots of interest the 700 rand you invest in June will gain and what the total value of that investment will be? Hmm. Why don't you have a look at the table I showed you earlier? It should be able to help you figure it out. Oh, I get it. If I deposit 700 rand in June, it will only earn interest for 8 months. And I can now see that from the table that this 700 rand will be worth 745 rand and 58 cents on the 1st of February. Good. Now what about the 700 rand you'll deposit in July? Well, it will only earn 7 lots of interest. It looks like there's a pattern here. The May investment earned 9 lots of interest. The June deposit will earn 8 lots of interest. The July deposit will earn 7 lots of interest, and so on. Well spotted. I have a really good way of showing this pattern and only need to use some of the information from the table to do it. In the first column, I'll write down the number of lots of interest the deposit will earn. In the second column, the date you made the deposit. Next, the value of the deposit on the 1st of February. Now, I'll add in a new column with the formula in it. We can use the formula A equals P times 1 plus I to the power N to calculate the value of each of the deposits made from May to January. What I want you to notice is that the value of N just increases by 1 for each month. You also need to remember that you will earn money in January. And although you can't invest this money, you could use that 700 Rand towards paying your fees. This amount will not earn any interest though. Can you see how to work out what your total investment would be? Let's see. Well, the last column gives the total investment value for each of the deposits. So the total value of all the investments will just be the sum of the amount in the final column. You're absolutely right, Abokho. But before we calculate the final value, there's something I want you to have a look at. I have taken our previous table, reversed it so that the number of lots of interest increase. I want you to focus on the last column. Do you see a pattern? Well, each term is increased by being multiplied by the same amount. Doesn't that mean that we have a geometric series here? You're right again. Well spotted. In this series, the second term divided by the first is 1 plus 0, 0,095 over 12. The third term divided by the second gives the same result. So we know it is a geometric series. We also know that the common ratio is 1 plus 0, 0,095 divided by 12. Do you remember how to calculate the sum of a geometric series? I suppose we could add all the terms together. But that could take quite a while. I think there's a formula that we could use though, but I don't remember what it is. Yes, there is a formula and this is it. See if you can use this formula to find the total value of your investment. Oh, thanks. Okay, so we have to find the sum. The first term is 700. So, A is 700. And we've already worked out that the common ratio is 1 plus 0, 0,95 divided by 12. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 terms. So n is 10. Now if I substitute those values into the formula, I should be able to work out how much money I would have saved by the time I have to pay my fees. So by January I would have saved 7,254 Rand and 71 cents. Yeah, that's right. But you don't look so happy about that. Well, I'm not happy with the results. 
It seems like I won't have enough money to pay my first year's fees of university. Maybe I made a mistake. Is there somewhere I can check the results? Yes, there is a formula that you can use to check the method that we use to calculate your savings. In fact, you might find this method easier to use than the table approach when answering exam questions too. Here it is. The F stands for the future value. The X is the amount invested at regular intervals. I stands for the interest per period, written as a decimal. And N for the number of deposits made. This formula is called the future value formula. Let's use it to check Debuho's calculations. We substitute 700 for X, as this is the amount of money he will deposit monthly. The interest is equal to 0 0.09, 5 divided by 12, and the number of deposits is 10. If we use a calculator, we find that Debuho's future value of his investment is 7,000 254 rand and 71 cents. He wanted to have 10,000 rand, which means he has a shortfall of 2,745 rand and 29 cents. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about financial mathematics on our website. That's www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.